Hello, welcome to Unit 10, Personality, Module 58, Social Cognitive Theories. This aligns with Meyer Psychology for the AP Course, Third Edition. Um, the slides go with the textbook, and this is a rather short module with only two learning targets to describe how social cognitive theorists view personality development and how they explore behavior and to discuss the criticisms of social cognitive theorists and um, how they face them. So the social cognitive perspective, this should be ringing a bell from some of the earlier modules if you've listened along and are, um, have the textbook. Uh, the social cognitive perspective views behavior as influenced by the interaction between people's traits, including their thinking and the social context, the environment. Much as nature and nurture always work together, so do individuals within the situations that they're in. So the behavioral approach focuses on the effects of learning on our personality and development. We're conditioned to repeat certain behaviors and we learn by observing and imitating others. So for example, a child with a very controlling parent may learn to follow orders rather than thinking independently. And they may exhibit more of a timid personality. This would be something that the behavioral approach would espouse. So how do the two approaches relate? Well, social cognitive theorists do consider the behavioral perspective, believing that we learn many of our behaviors through conditioning or by observing and imitating. So you're thinking about the observation, the Albert Bandura and those Bobo dolls, remember? Um, they also emphasize the importance of mental processes. What we think about a situation affects our resulting behavior. Instead of focusing solely on how our environment controls us, as behaviorists do, Social cognitive theorists focus on how we, with how we, who we are, interact with our environment. So this concept of reciprocal determinism, what is it? It's the interaction uh, between behavior, internal cognition, and our environment. So the internal personality factors like thoughts and feelings about, say, a risky activity like that person is doing there on the left, interact with our behavior, learning to rock climb, in our environmental factors factors like rock climbing friends. Do we have any of those? It's all kind of combined together to make us who we are and um, influence our decisions that we make. So how does reciprocal determinism actually explain personality development? Well, Albert Bandura, again, he was, remember, think back, he was the, um, the psychologist who was in charge of those Bobo doll studies uh, at Stanford University. He proposes that our personalities are shaped by the interaction of our personal traits, including our thoughts and feelings, our environment and our behaviors. So what are three specific ways in which individuals and environments interact? So different people choose different environments. The reading you do, the shows you watch, the music you listen to, you choose those based on who you are, the different person that you are to some extent at least, and then those also shape you. So our personalities shape how we interpret and react. If we perceive the world as threatening, we watch for threats and we prepare to defend ourselves. Our personalities also create situations to which we react. How we view and treat people in turn influences how we treat us, they treat us. So think about that biopsychosocial approach, which has been woven throughout everything within this course, right? The biological, the psychological, and the sociocultural. Well, they all influence our personality. So the biological, we think the genetically determined temperament, our ANS, Reactivity, our brain activity, the psychological influences, our learned responses, our unconscious thought processes, expectations and interpretations, and then those socio-cultural influences, the childhood experiences that we may have had, our situational factors, the cultural expectations and the social support we may have. All of those things, according to um, the biopsychosocial approach, influence what our personality is. So as with other psychological phenomena that we have discussed throughout this class, personality is fruitfully studied at multiple levels. So the gene environment interaction, in addition to the interaction of internal personal factors, the environment and our behaviors, we also experience gene environment interaction. Our genetically influenced traits evoke certain responses from others which may nudge us in one direction or another. So in one study, those with the interacting factors of having a specific gene associated with aggression, plus being raised in a difficult environment, were most likely to demonstrate adult antisocial behavior. That is so important to remember, because so often we look and we're trying to figure out 
well, what's going on? This person grew up in this type of environment and they ended up fine. They may have grown up in a really terrible environment and they ended up fine, whereas another person may not. And it seems to be this gene environment interaction at play, right? If you have specific genes that are associated with a certain you know, type of a behavior like aggression, and then you're raised in a really challenging, difficult, potentially harmful environment, it's more likely that you would demonstrate antisocial behavior than someone that didn't have that genetic predisposition. So what are the influences on personality? In such ways, we are both the products and the architects of our environments. Behavior emerges from this interplay between external and internal influences. I love this next statement. Boiling water turns an egg hard and a potato soft. So think about that. Just because people are raised in the same environment doesn't mean they're going to have the same outcomes. It depends a lot on who they are. You know, if you're more like an egg and you, you get boiled, um, you're going to get hard. If you get if you're if you are more like a potato and you get boiled, you're going to get soft. So it's really an interesting analogy to think about. A threatening environment turns one person into a hero and another person into a scoundrel. So why are assessment centers the best predictor? of personality and behavior. So assessment centers where simulations are created to test people's responses to stress and crisis and such, exploit the behavior that best mean, that, that the best means of predicting behavior is neither a personality test nor an interviewer's intuition. Rather, the best predictor of future behavior is for past behavior in similar situations. I'm going to read that again because it's really important. When we think about trying to understand other people's behavior and even our own, the best predictor of future behavior is the person's past behavior patterns in similar situations. So what criticisms have the social cognitive theorists faced? Well, critics charge that social cognitive theories focus so much on the situation that they fail to appreciate those, the inner traits, which we know now through lots of different types of research and especially through like behavioral genetics, that those are very important. Where is the person in the view of the personality? And where are human emotions? Social cognitive theorists have also been faulted for underemphasizing the importance of unconscious motives, emotions, and biologically influenced traits. So we're already to the review. Albert Bandura first proposed a social cognitive perspective, which views personality as the product of the interaction between a person's traits, including thinking, and the situation. So who the person is and the environment. So the behavioral approach contributes in understanding that our personality development is affected by learned responses. Social cognitive researchers apply principles of learning as well as cognition and social behavior to personality. Reciprocal determinism describes the interaction and mutual influence of behavior, internal processes, pro internal personal factors, and environmental factors. So those are all influencing each other. Assessment situations involve involving simulated conditions exploit the principle that the best predictor of future behavior is a person's behavior in similar situations. Social cognitive theorists of theories of personality build on well-established concepts of learning and cognition and sensitize researchers to how situations affect and are affected by individuals. The social cognitive theorists have been faulted for underemphasizing the importance of unconscious motives, emotions, and biologically influenced traits. And that is it. Thank you for listening. Take care.